All right, when I'm working here in the shop, I tell you, there's a lot of going back and forth between machines. And many times I'll be doing a run of parts here on the lathe, and then I have to take all those parts, and then I have to bring all those parts right over here to the milling machine. And then I'll do a process on them here at the mill, and then sometimes I gotta bring them all the way back over here to the lathe again. Then there's times I'm cutting parts here on the bandsaw, then I have to take all those parts over here to the sander and deburr them, and then bring them over to the milling machine. Then I'll do a process over here on the mill, and then maybe after that, I have to take all those parts back over here to the lathe to do something over here. And you can see that this turns into a well-worn path around the shop. Now, there's one thing that's missing in this whole equation, and that is a rolling shop cart or a shop tray. I'm thinking along the lines of a surgical tray. Right on folks, John Crane here in the shop and that is the plan for today, is to build a rolling tool and parts cart for here in the shop. I'm actually gonna build two of them. All right, so here is the plan for today. Now somebody locally was giving away these cafe style table stands and so I nabbed them right up. Now these did have a metal cast part up top that holds the table. They were sitting outside a little bit rusty so I threw those parts into some evapor rust overnight to get that rust off and then I'll clean those up with a wire brush and paint them. But check out these stands. I took these apart, those come off and these stands are really beefy. This is heavy brass or bronze. This is a heavy casting. So what I'm gonna do with these, I'm gonna take each of these and I'm gonna take the feet off of each leg here and then I'm gonna drill and tap this so I can attach a caster to each foot. So this will be our rolling parts surgical tray here in the shop. Now I picked up a couple lengths of Schedule 40 pipe. One is inch and a quarter. The other one here is one inch. Now this is great because these two sizes sleeve together nicely. And this is gonna be our center leg of the cart. And I can make this so one slides inside the other and I can have adjustable height on this cart. Now, I also picked up these half sheet baking trays. Now this is gonna be the top of our cart. So I want one of these trays to be attached to the cart full time. And then I'll have a second tray that can nest into that one. So then you can take you know, this tray off, bring your parts anywhere, put them back on top of the rolling cart. I think that's gonna be pretty cool. And these are some pretty, heavy duty baking trays, Nordic ware. I picked these up, I think they're like 12 bucks a piece or something, but it's nice heavy aluminum. All right, let's throw another log on the fire and get busy cutting some steel here in the shop. Here I'm cutting four pieces of our Schedule 40 two pieces at 25 inches of the one inch pipe and two at 25 inches of the inch and a quarter pipe. see how this is going to go together. So this is going to be our main upright and then our smaller piece of schedule 40 will sleeve right inside of here. And then these guys here, I cleaned these up after the evapor rest. I did a little wire brushing on them and I'm going to put some paint on these here in the next few minutes. But this will attach right to the top. And then right here, I think I'm going to put a cut across here put a slit down and kind of do a tightening mechanism with a handle right here. 
All right, but in order for me to attach this Schedule 40 to our table bottom, I wanna be able to put a bolt through the bottom of our table here and then have it screw in to the bottom of our Schedule 40. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of steel here and I'm gonna turn this down so it fits inside our pipe and then I'll drill and tap the center of this so then I can have a bolt go right into here. That would be a nice, strong, secure connection. I'll do the same thing for this one inch. I'll turn down a piece that fits inside there and then we can bolt this right to the top of our stand. Now, once I do turn down these little plugs that fit inside here, they, you know, these won't be very long. Maybe they'll be an inch long type of thing, but I'll drill a hole through this pipe and then I'll be able to weld through that hole on either side to hold this plug into our pipe. All right, let's put a quick coat of paint on these and then let's head over to the lathe and turn those plugs. All right, this is a CNMG 431 that I have in here. And this one is nice, it has a nice chip breaker on it, but I'm gonna pull that out and I'm gonna put in a CNMG 432, which is a little bit bigger. You see that nice chip breaker on that one there. And I'm gonna replace that. Here's the CNMG 432. I'm gonna chuck up on this inch and a quarter round bar, and I'm gonna make two one inch plugs. So right here, I'm gonna leave about three inches sticking out of the chuck. For our one inch pipe, for that to sleeve inside, it looks like we have one inch, 60, 70,000. So this doesn't have to be a very tight fit. So I'm gonna go one inch, 50 thousands. After that skim pass, we are at 1,235, and we gotta go to 1,050. So that is a difference of 185 thousandths that we have to take off. Now this is just some hot roll steel. You can see how much this 432 CNMG like taking off that hundred thousands pass there. So let's see where we're at. All right, we're at one, let's see, 1080 here, 80,000. So we got 10, 20, 30 thousands to take off in this next pass. All right, now we're right around 154, 153, and I think that's pretty good. I think our pipe will slip right on there. You know, this pipe has a little seam inside here. So what I'm gonna do is just mill a little flat spot on there so it slides right in there, but I can tell that that's gonna go right inside. All right, but now we're gonna change things up to our parting tool some of these chips out of the way and let's just bring this down here we want to get two one inch pieces out of this We want to go down to 1390, so we're going to take off 90 thousandths.
I'm getting ready to tap these. But before I do, I don't need threads to go all the way through this hole. So what I'm gonna do is I got a half inch drill bit here. I'm gonna drill in a half an inch. And then when I tap these, I'll only tap one half inch of this. You know, the bolt doesn't need that much to hang on to and half inch is more than enough. This is a half 13 spiral tap here. You see it's got the little spiral cutters here at the tip. This is nice. This pushes the chip through. This is a great tap for power tapping. All right, now before tapping, it's always good to put a little whey oil down on the ways here because the tailstock needs to slide in and out freely to do this power tapping here. I got the speed of the lathe way down low. We'll just walk our tap in here. That should pick up. our half 13 thread nicely cut we got relief on the back side all right three more to go got these two in the vise i got a little v groove here to clamp these in into these uh, vise jaws so what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna skim the top of each of these so they will slide into this pipe and that this seam will not interfere when it slides in. There's our seam, there's our little flat. And that is, that's a nice fit. Let's see if I can get this to go through without this drill bit skating around. Let's see what we got. be our hole that we're going to weld our plug to so we can stick our deal in there zap it with the juice all right i'm back over here at the lathe and before i weld this plug in through these holes i want to just take a light skim pass over this galvanizing because when you weld this i don't know if you guys have ever had a galvanized headache or you breathe in those fumes those fumes are super toxic so instead of sanding it off i'm just going to cut off a little skim coat all right now what i got going on here is i have a 5 16 inch end mill and i'm going to cut a slot along the top of this pipe and this is going to create the clamping mechanism that we want to make to clamp our stand. All right, let's crank this up to 1000 RPM.
right, I'm over at the bandsaw, and now I'm gonna cut all the way down, but not all the way through. I'm just gonna let the blade come down and just hit that seam right there. I didn't cut all the way through, so there's just a little bit left there to hold our clamping mechanism on. All right, I gotta cut a couple wings right here, and it looks like a couple pieces at an inch and a quarter. Now what I'm after is making a clamping mechanism kind of like this. I think this is like from an old hi-hat or cymbal stand or something that I had. But this is the kind of clamping thing that I am making on here. So I'm going to put a couple wings right here and then we're going to pinch this together with a bolt and a little handle. All right, let's take a look in the handle bucket and see what we can find. I've got all these cool handles. Oh, they're saved from various things in this bucket. You know, old milling machine handles. Yeah, something like, let's see, like this here. Like this could be a good handle right there, right? And even this, look at this one. Yeah, exactly. Something like this guy. This would be nice for tightening down our stand. It'd be cool if I had two of these. Maybe we're gonna have to do one of each. I think that's about it. Yeah, could be something like that too. I like having a nice long handle. You can get a good purchase on it. Instead of like a, a knob, I can't stand turning a little knob. But a nice handle like this, yeah, this would be great. Right, inch and a quarter. We're gonna cut this flat bar down. All right, here is the little assembly I got bolted up. And now I'm just gonna put these right on here. I'm gonna do one at a time and I'm just gonna try to tack these in place and then I'll... Yeah, just like that. I just want that a little bit recessed into the hole. This is nothing critical about this. While our steel is cooling after the welding, I'm trying to figure out how to drill these. And I'm thinking this is gonna be some setup. I just wanna be able to clamp the end in the vise. I don't wanna do some big elaborate setup for these guys. Maybe it's a couple blocks like that. There's a couple more. It'd be nice to be able to drop a bolt. I got a little bit of a stop here that I can, you know, pop this out, spin it to the next one. And nothing about these is that accurate. I'm just gonna aim in for the old threaded hole here. I'm gonna drill this out. 
tap this again for uh, half 13. So I gotta switch this drill bit out to 2760 ports. I'll move on over. Moving on up to the side. All right. Deluxe apartment in the sky. All right, so I'm gonna drill this out. I think it's drill and tap all in one deal. All right, I just tried flipping this around a few times and I'm gonna go for it. I think I can do it where I can drill all three holes, come back around and tap three holes. It is a pain in the neck, you know, always changing the drill and the tap and the speeds for each hole. It is nice to have it exactly in line every time. Check out these old, these old Uncle Jimmy glasses here. Aren't these classic? Right, you can't get these safety glasses anymore. Although these are probably in style now. They should come back. All right, I'm gonna give it a whirl. I'm gonna try to do all six holes, then come back with the tap. Let's see how that goes. in the back here. And just looking, you know, at the hole being cut there and how shiny that is, that almost makes me want to polish these up, I think, after all this work, right? I think that might deserve a little cleanup. So let me see if I got some scotch bright. I'll see what I can do here. All right, I think Whalen Jennings here is uh, saying to polish those up. And I think if I go right behind the Joe's shop hat, that's an awesome hat, by the way. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, right back here, I got some of these Scotch-Brite pads for the angle grinder. All right, that is as far as I'm going to take these. I went through a few discs here, but that's a huge improvement to what they were. And heck, these are gonna be in the shop. They're gonna have all kinds of junk all over them, but it's nice to have them cleaned up just a little bit. All right, there's our clamping mechanism. So now we gotta get the bolt and the handle in there. All right, let's see. I'm just looking at our little handle mechanism. And this is a, it's got a square shaft. And I'm thinking if I took a square shaft and I thread it one side and had the other side square, that could be a nice little locking handle, right? And I weld a nut to this side, but I got a cut. I got some 3 8 stock here. This is a little bit under 3 8 so I'll have to mill it down. But if I slide that in, put that set screw in there, and then have this thread it right out here, that could be the ticket. The square stock here is at 375. I gotta go down to 310. So I'm gonna mill off 
65 on each side. All right, let's take 35 right off the bat and then we'll come back and we'll take 30. Yeah, we're right there at 310. I'll give this a flip. All right, let's check our fit. That's, that's nice, that's exactly what we want. Fits in both handles. We can put a set screw in there. All right, now to turn this down and thread this side. One of them done. Here's our little deal here. A little threaded stud. Slide into our square hole. And then this has a little set screw that I can tighten down. And then also I'll put on this washer. Now this will be nice because this will seat up against that square stock and so when I'm tightening that will push against that rather than pulling on the set screw. All right but this handle here wasn't drilled for a set screw so I got to drill and tap that. I'm absolutely loving this new hex key rack. Check out how convenient this is. Let's pull that right out. If you guys haven't seen this video, go back and check this one out where I build the rack. Right back in the slot, right on. I just made on the lathe is just a couple nuts, 5 16 18. And now, what I'm gonna do that's gonna be our nut for our handle. So I'm just gonna hold this in place so I can weld it. looking extra stout. Let's see how our our handle works here. We'll thread this in. That's awesome. That's great. So then we we slide our pipe in. And we give this a clamp down. Look at that. That's excellent. That's working like a charm. Let's put these casters on, these blue ones. These are actually really nice casters that I got. I got a couple different sets here. I got these gray ones. I got these off of eBay. These I ordered in new, but to put these on, I got this bolt and to make it so this bolt doesn't stick through, I'm gonna put a couple washers right up here. And so I'm just gonna thread this in. I'll see how this all fits and then later I'll probably pull these back out, put some lock Loctite on these. All right. 
Look at those. Those are looking deluxe. Makes me think of the A-Team, right? Don't you love it? When the plan comes together. Well, the, what was his name? George Papard. He was great on that show. Got the cigars going. All right, now it's time to put our, our center stand on. I got the, the half inch bolt. Give this a little jolt. Look at that action. Very cool, very cool. Nice, nice. All right, the big belt in the blue here. Beaver, beaver size of Bobcat. Old Jeremiah Johnson, a big belt in the blue. Ain't gonna do no good hiding him in the corn crib. All right. There we go. Look at that. Pretty cool. Get these tightened up. And then I think I'll just pull this out right now, flip this upside down on the baking sheets. Four and three eighths, four and three eighths, one. I was tracing the holes with the Pika marker, and then I was also thinking Transfer punch is a good way to go, but actually a good way to go right here is the VIX bit. This is a nice self-centering bit used for hinges, all kinds of things, but this, that's the ticket right here, right? The VIX bit, big VIX workshop, right? I'm sure he's got some of these down there in his workshop. I'm just gonna mark the holes. Yeah, that's the ticket with the VIX bit. The bolt I'm gonna use here, this is an elevator bolt. This is just a quarter 20. And it's got like a nice big flat head on it. All right, now I'm just gonna slide a, a piece of wood under these. And with that as a backer. Yeah, don't do that. just used a cold chisel and punched these holes with the chisel. That's a nice way to do it too. These trays sit right in on top here. That is great. I just cut some some vinyl flooring that I had to lay in there as a little tray liner. But that is great. I'm stoked. I am stoked. <laughs> All right, here's a little phony baloney mock setup, but this is great to test it out. Put some tools on here as if I'm getting set up for a job on the lathe or the mill or that type of thing. You know, this might be loaded up with a bunch of parts is more like it, but maybe one tray, I got some tools. One tray, I got some parts. This is, this is dynamite. Paging Dr. Beeper, Dr. Beeper, surgery room 17. All right, this is deluxe. I'm working at the lathe, I got a bunch of parts. I bring it over here to the milling machine. I go back and forth, deburring. This is deluxe. And another cool thing I think about this is I can use this as an adjustable height stand. Maybe I have something long. You know, sometimes I got long pieces of stock that I got to support way out there. I'm drilling some holes here on the milling machine. I can use this as an adjustable stand. I, I just think this is deluxe. What a nice addition to the shop. I've been wanting to build this for a long time. Now I got two of them in the shop. All right, right on folks, two awesome rolling carts here for the shop. This is part of my shop infrastructure series. If you haven't seen this video where I built this awesome rack here for paint supply storage, check this out. I got the tray. I got the tray liners. 
I got roller covers. On the other side, I got brushes. If you haven't seen this video, I'll put a link somewhere here around this screen. You can check that out. That is pretty cool. I'm doing a whole series about different things to organize your shop, my shop. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had fun making it. That was a lot of steps making these carts. These were a lot of work as you guys have seen if you've watched this whole video all the way through. There's a lot to do here. All right, hope you guys are great. I'll see y'all soon. Please like, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your buddies, your pals, your amigos. All right, right on.